and don't take life seriously because you're not going to get out of it alive to begin with. The, the last time across Indiana caught up with Red Skelton, in fact, the only time we featured him on the show, was way back during our second season. Red was clowning around at a press conference in Muncie where he delivered some tongue-in-cheek musings about his Hoosier roots. <laughs> he said, what do you like about coming back to Indiana? This <laughs> is the fact that I was leaving again. <laughs> No, it's, it's a wonderful state. I mean, it's the world, actually. The sun rises in Richmond and sets in Terre Haute, see? During his many decades as an entertainer, it seems Red also held on to a healthy sense of his Hoosier humility. He once said that he didn't want to be remembered as the best comic or dancer or singer. He simply wanted to be remembered as a clown. He lived a rich and rewarding life, and yet his recent passing still saddened us all. Clowns worldwide must have shed a tear that day, remembering fondly the man who was truly a clown among clowns. A clown among clowns. And where do you imagine clowns go when they pass from this world? Why, clown heaven, of course. I'm Brenda Earnshaw, and you're in clown heaven where the good clowns go. It's clearly a bright spot along old State Road 37, just south of Martinsville. But don't let the name fool you. Clown heaven isn't just for clowns contemplating their next sight gag in the hereafter. Brenda Earnshaw started the place after she retired from the phone company. In clown circles, Brenda is better known as Nimmy Knot. And Nimmy simply could not find all the clown supplies she needed. So Brenda started Clown Heaven. It's varied. There's so many different types of clowns, and supplies are, are hard to find. You just kind of have to glean out what you can find. So we kind of gathered together everything we could find, and we're constantly on the look. And when, when we find something, we get it and bring it in. I say I sell a lot of imagination because um, I will design something for them or come up with ideas for them to use a lot of times and uh, it's just kind of a different, different type of job than I've ever had before. Brenda and Nimi not even teach classes on how to be a clown. Of course there's a lot of clowning around, but Brenda says that there's also a serious side to the business of making people smile. We take it very seriously. Uh, it's funny business, but it's a serious side too. And the things that look like accidents are probably very well planned, so they look like accidents. It's not something you just put on a couple of dots on your cheek and go out and act stupid. That's what a lot of people think. Brenda says that clowns and magic both do brisk business in churches these days and clowns are especially popular in nursing homes, where a silly nose and some goofy shoes can do a lot to brighten a person's day. I don't know what it is about the big shoes, but people really like them and notice them, even the adults. There's always a need in the nursing homes. If you stop and think about it, you don't see very many bright colors and great big smiles in a nursing home. And when I've done nursing homes before, I've actually had to pry their fingers loose off of me to be able to move on to another patient. They're that thrilled with just the human touch and somebody paying attention to them. Uh, not that nursing homes are bad, but the people just need that human touch. <laughs> Brenda says that the death of Red Skelton made her stop and think about what made him such a great clown and what future clowns can learn from his life's work. Brenda and Nimmy Knot both realize that if there really is a clown heaven, then Red Skelton is certainly one of its funniest performers. But Brenda and her colorful alter ego also feel that the spirit of Red lives on in this brightly painted spot, the place where clowns can find a bit of heaven right here on Earth. I felt very sad to see Red gone, and it's so sad that our younger people don't know what a great comedian he was. He enjoyed his humor as much as the spectators did, for one thing. It wasn't just something that he was putting on without feeling. And he was, was clean with his act. 
there was no put downs, no negative mm -hmm. things, no um, foul language, and yet it was funny. It, he proved that that wasn't needed to be funny. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.